welcome to episode 57 everyone. The uh, Abrams build is drawing to a close and in this video I'll be showing you how to paint NATO pattern camouflage. The paint process for this tank started way back in the beginning of the build where I already started laying down the, the NATO green base color. You'll uh, recall that I added the uh, the, the green base color as well as the highlight colors and all the pre-shading that went along with that. In this video I'll be taking it a step further, I'll be applying the, uh, the three color NATO camouflage pattern and uh, I found this very useful uh, camouflage profile on Cyber Modeler and uh, guys this is such an awesome reference, uh, it indicates very accurately the uh, placement of the black, the green and the brown and uh, if I didn't know any better, I would say this came straight from a US Army paint shop manual. It certainly looks to be dead on correct. And of course, thank you very much to Cyber Modeler for generously posting this very useful resource. Guys, the, the technique that I'm following here is not my own. I saw it for the first time in Fine Scale Modeler magazine, July 2001 issue. And in that issue, there was this really excellent article on uh, doing camouflage with soft masks. Basically paper cutouts raised from the surface and uh, then uh, sprayed from the top down to get that uh, very subtle soft edge. And uh, really this article inspired me to build the A1 Sky Raider a few years later. The, uh, the first step is to take accurate measurements of our model just so we can uh, enlarge that uh, image to the correct size. So having done that, uh, I can now go to the downloaded image that I got from uh, the Cyber Modeler website. There we go. And uh, for the next step, I'll be uh, using Photoshop again. Again, you can use any other application, similar application that you are familiar with. Um, once I am in, uh, in Photoshop, I need to create a new document. In this case, I'll be um, printing this out on paper, uh, A4 sized uh, sheet. There we go. I now place the downloaded image uh, inside this document and uh, using the guides that I uh, set up to the, uh, the correct measurements, I now cut out the various sections that I need uh, on separate pages. Once this is done, I can uh, go ahead and uh, print out uh, those pages on ordinary office paper. So there you go. I now have the left side, the right side, the top, as well as the front and the rear, all the, uh, the camouflage uh, splotches that I'll need to paint this tank. I just uh, recheck my measurements, make sure that uh, my printout is the same size as the, as the model itself. And uh, now this basically becomes a paint by numbers sort of exercise. Uh, I'll, be, uh, I'll be masking out the, the green sections first, indicated with the number two in this case. And uh, I carefully start cutting out those sections with a sharp pair of scissors. Now, to stick this to the model, I'll be using a product called uh, Press Stick. It's something we have here in South Africa. Uh, similar products overseas in the United States will be uh, something like Blue Tack. And uh, I'll be using small pieces of this just to raise these, uh, these cut masks uh, from, the, uh, from the surface of the model. You can see that's what I'm doing on the screen there. I then uh, go ahead and position these, uh, these cutout masks, uh, making sure that the detail on the, on the paper and on the model align. And uh, once this is done, I know that uh, I'll be spraying a very accurate pattern. Now for painting, I'll be using this, uh, this paint set uh, from Vallejo, the NATO Armor Colors uh, paint set. Guys, this is a great set and it really shows you the, uh, the full process of uh, painting the, the, the basic colors and then uh, adding highlight uh, tones to it as well. There are six colors in this, uh, in this paint set and uh, I first start by uh, just spraying the edges of the, the, the pattern, making sure that I follow uh, the instructions on, uh, on, this, on this camo profile. In this case I'm adding brown, spraying directly from the top in order to get that, uh, that very soft sort of, a, sort of an edge. Once this is done, I can uh, remove the masks and you can see there the beginnings of our NATO camouflage pattern. There you can see that is the, uh, the first result. I just tested it on this side first to make sure that uh, my plan was going to work. I can now move on to the next side and uh, again cut out the, uh, the necessary masks uh, covering the, uh, 
the green, the NATO green first. This, uh, this process certainly takes a lot of time, but it's worth the, uh, worth the effort when one looks at the, at the result that I got in the end. So uh, take your time with this, don't rush it. Uh, you'll be uh, painting your model only once, so uh, it makes sense to uh, do it perfectly. Again, I'm using uh, the basic color, brown. And in this case, you'll notice the number 249. Now, this is similar to 249 in the model air uh, range from Vallejo. It's the same color. And uh, again, using my Iwata Eclipse airbrush, I now carefully start spraying just the, uh, the edges of that pattern. Of course, later I'll be filling the, uh, filling the, the color in uh, once all the, uh, the, the soft edges are sprayed. Next, I'll be adding some NATO black, again 251, and this uh, is the same as uh, the Model Air NATO black uh, color. Spraying it over the masks, getting that nice soft edge that, uh, that I see in my reference images as well. Rather build up your color over time, avoid uh, spraying too much color in one go. Once this is removed, our very nice uh, three color pattern is revealed. Now for the back, uh, a lot of masking was required. Uh, I first had to protect that engine bay, also the, uh, the turret uh, area, and uh, carefully spraying around those masks. The turret was quite tricky because uh, I cut a huge gaping hole in the middle of it and uh, some careful masking was required there as well. So after I think two days worth of spraying, this was the result. Uh, the, uh, the basic colors of the uh, very familiar three color NATO pattern is down on the tank and uh, the next step will be to uh, add some realistic fading to the, the center section of those uh, camouflage blotches. Now the, the fading that I mentioned earlier is going to be lighter shades of the NATO black and the NATO brown, and those will be added uh, freehand to the, to the center section of uh, each of those colored blotches. In this case, I'll be using uh, this color, dark gray blue for the black, also provided in the, uh, the the Vallejo paint set. And this is now very carefully applied with my Iwata Eclipse airbrush. Uh, this requires a steady hand, and uh, it's certainly not something that you rush because you don't want to risk overspraying uh, onto the other colors. Next, the brown, and uh, I'll be using the, the NATO brown and mixing in a little bit of uh, a color called NATO Light, something that's only provided in this paint set. There you go. That is the lighter color that I've just mixed up, a lighter shade of that uh, NATO Brown color. Similar to what I just did with the, uh, the, the gray, I now add uh, the light brown to uh, the center of each of those colored blotches. The, uh, the water airbrush that I'm using is so well suited to this type of work. Uh, if, the, uh, if the air pressure is just right and uh, I've got a steady hand, uh, it's really possible to, to draw pencil lines uh, with that airbrush. And uh, this requires some, some, some practice, but uh, it's certainly worth, uh, worth the trouble. Guys, there's the result. The, uh, the three NATO colors have been uh, added. The, the highlight colors have been added, the shading and uh, it's certainly coming along nicely. I'm loving the pattern that I'm seeing here. The next step is to just properly blend those colors together for a more uniform look, and for that I'll be using this filter from MIG Productions. This is one specially formulated for, uh, for NATO camo, and uh, I add this with a brush straight from the bottle. This, of course, is an enamel product, so you can also thin this if required. Uh, but you can already see there the nice uh, blending that's happening uh, with those colors. 
There you go, that's the result. It looks very faded at this stage, but fear not. I'll be uh, adding a pin wash and uh, some dry brushing uh, in the next step, which will certainly uh, enhance the look a little bit more. We need to protect the, this paint, and uh, for that I'm adding a gloss varnish uh, to the surface of the model. And of course, this will help with the application of a enamel wash. Now at this stage I also added the decals and uh, that is something that you can uh, see in episode 56, the full process that I followed there. And uh, that's also the reason why you need a gloss varnish on the model at this stage. With the decals applied I can now move on and uh, apply the, the wash color that I spoke about earlier. I'll be using a dark wash from Ammo Mic. This of course is an enamel product. And uh, because it's enamel, I can uh, thin this with odorless thinner, any, any of the odorless thinners uh, that you prefer. This is now applied with a brush to all the uh, detail on the model. It will uh, flow into all those, uh, those recessed areas and uh, the dark color will certainly enhance uh, all the panel lines, all the, all the raised detail on this model. You can already see the, uh, the wash doing its work. I ended up applying uh, the wash twice just to get the, the correct amount of definition in there. So this is something you'll have to gauge with your eye and just see you know, how much you need to add. Uh, two applications was required uh, in my case. Leave this to dry properly at least two hours or more. And uh, when it's dried, the excess can be removed with either a paper towel for a cotton bud and some odorless thinner. Now to get rid of that glossy look, we need to add some, some matte varnish. In this case, I used two coats of uh, Microscale's Micro Flat. And uh, once this is applied, you can certainly see the, the, the wash doing its work there, nicely outlining the, all, that, uh, all that recess detail, the riveting, um, certainly making a big difference to the way this, this model looks. However, we're not done yet. Um, next, I'm going to use some German camouflage beige, as well as my uh, dry brush from Ammo Mic, this being a size six brush. This is a technique that I've uh, shown in quite a few videos. Basically remove as much paint from the, the brush, the, the bristles as possible, and uh, just continue lightly brushing the, the raised detail uh, in order to lay down the paint. And uh, it certainly creates a very nice looking effect. So guys, there's the current state of progress. Um, it's certainly moving along very nicely. I'm loving the, the look of this paint and uh, all nicely blended in and uh, the dry brushing and uh, the pin wash uh, certainly uh, makes a big difference to the, to the look of this final model. Of course, we're not done yet. Uh, the last video in the series uh, will show some of the weathering that I'm going to do as well as adding some, uh, some small final details. There's all the products that I used, available from uh, your local hobby shop. And uh, as always guys, if you want to uh, keep up to date with this, uh, this build, do follow me on Instagram for regular updates. Thank you for joining me in this video and uh, looking forward to seeing everyone in the last episode in this series.